We all want progress. But if you're going on the wrong road, progress means doing an about turn and walking back to the right road. In that case, the man who turns back soonest is the most progressive. C.S. Lewis The Godly Troublemaker Podcast As the market share of Clown World Inc. continues to grow and the carnival expands its operations as to be able to caravan through this sweet land of liberty, land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, most of us are just trying to catch our bearings and make sense of things. All too often, we have this unsettling feeling in our stomachs, like maybe the panda buffet wasn't such a good idea. But as we try and make sense of things by traversing the interscape and scouring podcasts and blogs and vlogs and whatnot and what have you, sometimes it's hard to find sensible voices in an unsensible time. Stable voices in an unstable time. Though there are some great ones out there today that I have profited much from and I am very thankful for, I usually find voices from the past to be the most encouraging. As the preacher says, quote, What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing of which it is said, See, this is new. It has been already in the ages before us. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 9 through 10. That great theologian Bob Dylan said, The times, they are a changing, and we feel every bit of that. But the times have always been a change in. We live in a time of novelty whores, but we have always lived in a time of novelty whores. And a novelty whore always thinks his brand of novelty is the best. C.S. Lewis described it this way in Surprised by Joy. Quote, Chronological snobbery is the uncritical acceptance of the intellectual climate common to our own age and the assumption that whatever has gone out of date is, on that account, discredited. You must find why it went out of date. Was it ever refuted, and if so, by whom, where, and how conclusively? Or did it merely die away as fashions do? If the latter, this tells us nothing about its truth or falsehood. From seeing this, one passes to the realization that our own period is also a period, and certainly has, like all periods, its own characteristic illusions. They are likeliest to lurk in those widespread assumptions which are so ingrained in the age that no one dares to attack or feels it necessary to defend them. End quote. What widespread assumptions are ingrained in our age? Were these assumptions ever refuted? And if so, by whom? Where and how conclusively? With all these questions in mind, I would recommend that you put J. Gresham Machen's Christianity and Liberalism at the top of your 2023 reading list. I first read this book over 15 years ago. At that time, postmodernity had become a popular buzzword, and its illegitimate bastard child, the emergent church, had become all the rage. It was at this time that the good Lord put this little book in my lap that was published a hundred years ago now. In Christianity and Liberalism, Machen addresses what was known as modernity, or Protestant liberalism. As I read, I was amazed at how clearly and succinctly Machen exposed the errors of liberalism, but was also able to draw a clear line of demarcation in the sand between liberalism and authentic Christianity thus showing that what we have isn't a difference of opinion, but two distinct religions that are on a head-on collision. Here we see a perfect illustration of what the Apostle Paul describes as one of the tasks of an elder. Quote, He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught, so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. Titus 1.9 However, the one thing that really stood out to me wasn't how clearly and succinctly Machen dismantled the liberalism of his day, but how clearly and succinctly he dismantled the liberalism of our day. Even though modernity and postmodernity appeared to be opposed to each other on paper, 
Unbelief is unbelief, and truth has a way of destroying all comers to the arena. Though written a hundred years ago, it could have been written yesterday, and I strongly recommend it to anyone in the church. As such, we are going to spend a few episodes, and perhaps a few more, briefly working through the contents of this book and apply them to today. May it be a blessing to you and cause much godly trouble in your sphere of influence. Introduction of Christianity and Liberalism Machen begins Christianity and Liberalism with the following words, quote, The purpose of this book is not to decide the religious issue of the present day, but merely to present the issue as sharply and clearly as possible, in order that the reader may be aided in deciding it for himself. Presenting an issue sharply is indeed by no means a popular business at the present time. End quote. Clear-cut definitions and bold facing of the logical implications of said terms is just as unpopular in the 2020s as it was in the 1920s. The reason for this is that the Lord of all the earth cuts straight. His word is clear and authoritative. It cuts all the way down and all the way through, soul and spirit, joint and marrow. The devil is a dealer in ambiguities and nuances. He is a liar and has been lying since the beginning. It is his very nature to do so. Misnaming things is what he does, and it creates confusion and moral and political and ecclesiastical disorder. So what Machen sets out to do is to shine a light on the liberalism of his day and clearly define what it is and compare that to historical Orthodox Christianity. Are we dealing with brothers in Christ who hold to the historical Christian faith but have diverging views on doctrine, such as Arminianism and Calvinism, or credos and patos, or pre-mills and post-mills, or are we dealing with another religion entirely that is simply dressed up in Christian terms which is unwittingly received by an ignorant church through the use of misnaming things and ambiguity and nuance? Quote, in setting forth the current liberalism, now almost dominant in the church, over against Christianity, we are animated, therefore, by no merely negative or polemic purpose. On the contrary, by showing what Christianity is not, we hope to be able to show what Christianity is, in order that men may be led to turn from the weak and beggarly elements and have recourse again to the grace of God. End quote. Machen. The Protestant liberalism of Machen's day was just as soft and just as squishy as the progressive Christianity is in our own day. It's a body without a spine, a house without a foundation. Simply sprinkling a little bit of Jesus pixie dust over paganism doesn't make it Christian. And when the torrents of life come crashing down upon it, you can clearly see that. Machen writes, the type of religion which rejoices in the pious sound of traditional phrases, regardless of their meaning, or shrinks from controversial matters, will never stand amid the shocks of life, end quote, and amen. We saw this clearly regarding all of the panic porn with COVID and everything surrounding that, namely the statism and scientism that was on full display. Instead of the church confidently resting in the sphere of authority given to it by Christ and seeking the authority of the scriptures to give a defense for the hope that is within us, far too many buckled under the shocks of life and deferred every aspect of church life to the state and then charged their brothers with sinning against God for being divisive when they didn't, because unity obviously means doing everything that the state tells you to do, and obviously this isn't something worth fighting over. Machen shows us the really important things are the things about which men will fight. Ideas have consequences, consequences that run all the way down and all the way through. For example just in regards the last few years. If the state can tell you where you can worship, when you can worship, and how you can worship, they don't much need to tell you what to worship because that's already been determined by your actions. You are no threat to them at all because they see your name on their membership roster. 
Machen writes, For after the apologist has abandoned his outer defenses to the enemy and withdrawn into some inner citadel, he will probably discover that the enemy pursues him even there. End quote. Winston Churchill described an appeaser as one who feeds a crocodile, hoping it will eat him last. Putting a leash on a crocodile doesn't tame the beast, but it does guarantee its lunch. When one makes a habit of apologizing to the enemy in order to win the enemy, pretty soon they find themselves apologizing for the gospel in order to win them. And just FYI, waving the white flag has never been a universal sign of victory. Instead, the Christian is one who waves the black flag, proudly declaring that no quarter will be given. What is at stake is not a mere differing of opinions, but a matter of differing religions. Quote, in the intellectual battle of the present day, there can be no peace without victory. One side or the other must win. Machen. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you go limping between two differing opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people did not answer him a word. 1 Kings 18.21 Modernism, or Protestant liberalism, was a non-redemptive religion. The postmodernism, liberalism, wokeism, And progressivism that has made its way into the church is a non-redemptive religion. It is not Christian. Machen writes, quote, As a matter of fact, however, it may appear that the figure which has just been used is altogether misleading. It may appear that what the liberal theologian has retained after abandoning to the enemy one Christian doctrine after another is not Christianity at all, but a religion which is so entirely different from Christianity as to belong in a distinct category. It may appear further that the fears of the modern man as to Christianity were entirely ungrounded, and that in abandoning the embattled walls of the city of God, he has fled in needless panic into the open plains of a vague natural religion, only to fall an easy victim to the enemy who ever lies in ambush there. End quote. The problem is much deeper than a culture war. Culture is always downstream and is reflective of and develops from what we worship. What we find ourselves in is a worldview war. There is a different center, a different foundation, and a different standard from which we base our lives because we serve different masters. The liberals, progressives, and wokies in the church may have a view of Scripture, but it's not authoritative. They may have a view of God and man, but it's not creator and creation. They may have a view of Jesus, but he is not the Son of God, the Savior of all men, and the Lord over all of creation. They may have a view of the gospel, but it's one that is devoid of the cross. They may have a view of justice, but it's devoid of God's law. They may have a view of salvation, but it's not through Christ alone. They may have an eschatology, but it's an eschaton that will be ushered in by the state and not the return of King Jesus. They may have a view of the spiritual, but it's absent of the Holy Spirit. They may have a view of civil government, but it certainly doesn't involve sphere sovereignty. They may have a view of Christian living, but it is devoid of holiness. No matter how many different ways you look at it, that dog don't hunt. You can put lipstick on a pig all you want, but in the morning when you sober up, I promise you're waking up with a pig and you're going to be none too happy about it. But if the pig self-identifies as a beautiful maiden, who am I to judge? Machen was writing after World War I and prior to World War II. Socialism and communism are on the rise. Naturalistic philosophies are on the rise. Scientism is on the rise. Modern inventions and industrialism have built a new world in many respects, making transportation and communication easier than ever before, 
leaving many to believe that there were no limits to what could be achieved through future progress. That should sound familiar to us. This led many to conclude that Christianity really had no place in this new, technologically advanced scientific age. However, all of this so-called advancement has come at a great cost, namely a lamentable decline in the things that really matter. The physical conditions of life may have improved, but at what cost to the spiritual realm and at what cost to the family? Nowhere is this more felt than in the realm of education, particularly public education. And yes, there were godly men sounding this alarm a long time ago. Had we heeded their alarm when it was sounded, we might have prevented ourselves from feeding on the noxious fruit that's been placed before us today. Quote, When one considers what the public schools of America in many places already are, their materialism, their discouragement of any sustained intellectual effort, their encouragement of the dangerous pseudoscientific fads of experimental psychology, one can only be appalled by the thought of a commonwealth in which there is no escape from such a soul-killing system. Machen continues, A public school system if it means the providing of free education for those who desire it, is a noteworthy and beneficent achievement of modern times. But when once it becomes monopolistic, it is the most perfect instrument of tyranny which has yet been devised, end quote. To which we would add, Amen and Amen. Conclusion What we need today is not novelty, but well-worn ways, old ways, and proven paths that have stood the test of time and have conquered all comers. What we need is the historic, orthodox Christian faith rooted in the literal, physical resurrection of King Jesus in a particular place, at a particular time, before a particular people. The only remedy for a dead and dying culture and a church that thinks it's winsome to die with it is a God who raises the dead. Quote, We all want progress, but if you're going on the wrong road, progress means doing an about turn and walking back to the right road. In that case, the man who turns back soonest is the most progressive. C.S. Lewis <laughs>